Hi, I'm Scott, and welcome back to the arena. Not long ago, I did my first bourbon tasting, all of all Michigan bourbons. Had a good time with that. That generated a lot of discussion on the channel. Some questions about my scotch and bourbon collection. You can see some of it behind me there. Um, there's probably 45 bottles or so um, split between uh, some scotch whiskeys, and which was my first love of whiskey, and then more recently adding in a lot of bourbons. Uh, when I was looking over the shelves, I noticed I've had forever a whole set of these little miniature tasting bottles. Um, and I can't tell you how long I've had them. They've made at least two moves with me. They've got to be at least 15 years old or so. You can tell by... The thing that made me think of this, and let's use them up, is they, none of them have been opened. You can see this bottle of Talisker, though, is only two-thirds full. Um, they've all had evaporation over the years. This one is Edward Dower. Um... Craig and Moore, 12. The Doll Winnie, 15. And I know this one's going to be good. The Log of Woolen, 16. Uh, all single malt Scotch whiskeys. Uh, all of them have great reputation. So I thought, what the heck? Let's go ahead and bust these things open. You know, the 10 year old Talisker might be 20 years old by this point. But let's bust them open, see what they taste like, and do a little mini sample bottle challenge, I guess. So, well, we'll start kind of with the 10 year olds, move to 12, 15, and 16. We'll crack open the Talisker. Oh, you know what? We gotta do, I almost forgot. No scotch tasting is complete without a nice cigar. But in this case, Last time I had a Romeo and Julieta. This one is a Monte Cristo Habana. You can see right there. Uh, yes, purchased legally. This one, last one was purchased across the river in Windsor. This one was a trip to London uh, a year or two ago. Very nice, so we'll get that going. And like I said, let's go ahead and pop open this Talisker first. This is from the Isle of Skye, I believe, which has some family ties for me. I'm part of Clan McLeod on my mother's side, which is based on the Isle of Skye. So, Talisker, 10 years old. <clears throat> Immediate sweetness a little. Not too aggressive. So like many of the scotches, Immediately some peatiness, some smokiness, much more pronounced than American bourbons. You know, the American bourbons have to be, they're whiskeys of course, but you know, they have to be in a, a, a new oak barrel. And these can, can be of various barrels, but this one, much much smokier, peatier than than you would find in an American bourbon. Kind of got a little bit of an edge on the finish, but very good. Next we'll have the Edward Dower. This is a 10 year old as well. They used to be known as Scotland's smallest distillery years ago. I think 
they don't say that anymore because there's actually been some craft distilleries that have popped up. But this is an older one. So let's see what we have here. Yeah, much less aggressive on the nose than the Talisker. I smell some more sweetness. Much smoother, much lighter on the palate than the Talisker. Um, really, really soft almost. Yeah, very pleasant. Very nice. So these are both 10 year old. Again, at this point, I have no idea how old they really are. The Craig and Moore 12 year old, another Highland Scotch, the Space Side. You see all of these, I'm just popping them open, but they're two thirds full. The rest has evaporated over the many years they've been sitting around. It's actually a nice way to use these things up. You, you can almost smell the, the molasses almost. I mean, you can definitely taste the yolk. Nothing has been anywhere near as smoky and peaty as a Talisker. Yeah, you can definitely taste the oak on this one. And that's what I enjoy so much about Scotch. There's such a wide range of flavor profiles. Um, <clears throat> you know, everything from something relatively light to Lafroig or something that is extremely peaty. Um, and so every once in a while I'll go for something very different, very peaty. So that brings us to the Dalwhinnie, a 15 year old when it went in. Again, crazy how much evaporation there's been. More floral on the nose, sweet. This one to me seems a little spicier, more peppery, perhaps. I've said this in another one of my videos. My palate is nowhere near sophisticated enough to give you complete tasting notes. Um, I like what I like, basically. But I can give you the, the highlights at least. And that brings us to the Log of Woolen 16. For those of you that have never had it before, it has quite a following. It's an Isla Scotch. So I anticipate this one to be similar to Talisker and have more of a smoky and peaty flavor. Uh, I don't have any more Glen Cairn glasses, so I'll put this one in more of a rocks glass. Yeah, initially on the nose, it's more aggressive, much like the Talisker. Very smoky, peaty, but light. There's a there's a light finish to it that you don't find on a lot of the smokier and peat peatier ones. I like this one a lot. Both the Talisker and the uh, Lagavulin pair very well with the cigar. It's that smokiness, I think, that. that make them very
complementary. Yeah, that's a that's a win. The nice the nice part about these sample packs, and I have no idea where I got this, where I got all these. Um, I'm sure they were a gift at some point, but it makes a nice way to sample your way through some, what I would imagine are some fairly expensive bottles. I haven't priced any of these on the regular size, but I've got to figure they're in this $50 to $100 range somewhere. I just couldn't let them sit here for another 10 or 15 years and evaporate all the way away. So, I didn't really do this as a taste testing to rank them. Um, I would say if you like a smoky peaty one, then Lagavulin would clearly be my choice, followed by the Talisker. I'm just going to jump straight to the Talisker to do a side by side comparison. Same peaty notes. Not, this one is not quite as smoky, the Talisker. And it's much sharper. Nowhere near as smooth as the Lagavulin 16. Which you would expect. Talisker 10, Lagavulin 16. Um, even though they have similar profiles, the Lagavulin is a clear winner if you like a nice smooth um, scotch. But kind of a fun way to test all of these little miniature bottles I had. Cleared them out of the bar, makes room for something else. Uh, if you enjoy these type of videos, please hit like, hit subscribe, hit the bell button, and we'll see you next time here in the arena.